anatomical position. We're going to look at the alignment of the head and neck. We're going to look at the shoulders to make sure that the shoulder level is basically symmetrical. We're going to inspect the anterior portion of the upper extremities. We're going to look at the pelvis. There's really nothing between the neck and the pelvis per se since we already did our chest exams. We're going to look at the pelvis and we're going to look at the pelvic height and is it symmetrical and or does she have a pelvic tilt. And then we're going to basically go down, look at the knees and go down the rest of the extremity and inspect over the front. Now, before you do this, and you know you have it in your handout and I, and I knew I was going to forget something. Before you start your examination, thanks. you're going to make one statement that will carry you through the entire examination and that is, at this point I'm going to perform the musculoskeletal examination. I will be inspecting and palpating for symmetry, inflammation, deformity or malalignment, uh, condition of the surrounding tissues, edema, tenderness, and ease of motion. So you're going to make one basic statement containing that information. Then you don't have to say, I'm inspecting for this and I'm palpating for that, I'm inspecting for this and I'm palpating for that. It's done. That's what you're doing on every joint. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you let all the questions know that because on the last one when we were doing, I had a falco we hit all of the things. Yeah. Up and down? Yeah, and you couldn't even hear him. We've never been told that, so can you let them know? I, I can let people know that, that come to the in services and do what they do. Uh, they know it's on the, it's on the checklist. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to argue about it. It's on the checklist. If you have a problem, and I told you this in class yesterday, if you have a problem with a faculty member, then come and see me. But I don't want to hear this after every examination. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Mm -hmm. There's going to be discrepancies. I can't fix that. I've said that before. I'm not going to keep repeating myself. If you have problems, come to me. You can play that on YouTube. I'm sure that's will <laughs> <laughs> Yes, all the faculty members know that. Now, once you've completed your inspection of the answer, turn to the left for me, please. You want to go from the side, and from the side, you're examining the lordotic curvature of the cervical spine, you're examining the kyphotic curvature of the thoracic spine, and you're examining the lordotic curvature <laughs> of the lumbar spine. Again, you're going to kind of look at the hips and make sure the alignment is okay, look from lateral, and then come around from the back and look at the back of the patient. I'm going to turn you around so everybody can see what the back looks like. You're going to look at spinal alignment. You're going to again look at the height of the shoulders and make sure they're symmetrical. You're going to look at the height of the hips and you're going to continue along the posterior aspect of the upper extremities and the posterior aspect of the lower extremities. Professor Sater, before you go on, would you like us to do it in the way that you're showing us right now? Yes. So do one major inspection. One major inspection. Okay. I understand that. You can do one major inspection or you can inspect it Thank you. on the front. But you have to inspect before you go. And right. if you don't verbalize that you're inspecting the posterior aspect of the arms, if you just stand here and I'm, and I'm looking at the back and I'm looking at the spine and you don't say I'm inspecting the posterior arms, I'm inspecting the posterior legs, I'm inspecting all that, then you didn't do it. Okay. I don't care if, you, if you're staring at it. If you don't verbalize it because the test says verbalized and performed. It has to be both. So you can get it all out of the way right now, or you can wait and do it with each section. Okay? Either way is fine. Some people prefer to do it with each section. All right. Once you're done with your inspection, what you're going to do is you need your palpation. And since we're at the back, at this point we're going to start with the spine. I'm going to start with the, with the neck, and I'm going to palpate the, the spinous processes starting at C7. This is my landmark. I'm going to palpate each spinous process coming down. Yes, you can palpate through the sports bra. Coming down, each spinous process has to be palpated. You can't hop down the back like this. Each one. All the way down to the sacrum. You do not have to go to the coccyx. Once you're here, you can either go back up the spine. My recommendation is start at the base of the skull. Always go head to toe. Start at the base of the skull and palpate the paravertebral muscles, include or paracervical in this region, and all the way down, you just want to palpate down. Mainly what you're palpating for is tenderness and deformity. I'm going to come all the way down again, basically to the sacrum. 
At this point, you need to come just a little bit to the side and palpate the sacroiliac joint. So you just want to palpate just a little bit along the sacroiliac. You don't have to go any further than that. All you're feeling for is a little bit of tenderness along the sacroiliac joint. Once I've completed my palpation of the spine, I'm ready to move forward to my range of motion examination. To perform the range of motion examination, you must be in front of the patient. So turn and face me, please. And what I'd like you to do is keep your chin down and touch your chest. And I'm checking flexion of the cervical spine. And now tip your head back as far as you can. And I'm checking extension of the cervical spine. And bring your chin forward, and that's good. Turn your head to the right. I'm checking rotation and to the left. I'm checking rotation. And I need to be watching my patient so you can just kind of turn your head a little bit. Now I want you to take your head and tilt it to the right and try to touch your ear to your shoulder. That's good. And tilt your head to the left. That's good. And relax. So I've checked the cervical spine. Now I'm going to come in the back. And I'm going to place my hands on your hips, okay? When you place your hands on the patient's hips, this is not just I'm laying my hands on here. These hands are here to stabilize. So you have to hold it. I, I showed everybody like this, and there were people who had smaller hands that couldn't grab the hips. So I'm going to show you like this this time. All right? And I want you to bend forward and touch your toes, or some proximity thereof. Good. And back up straight. And lean back towards me as far as you can. That's good. Stand up straight. And I want you to twist your shoulders to the right as far as you can. As far as you can. Good. And to the left. <laughs> to the left. That's good. And you'll notice her hips are not moving the whole time that I'm doing this. And tilt your shoulders to the right, running your hand, hand down the outside of your leg as far as you can go. Good. And the same to the opposite side. And that is for lateral bending of the spine. So I've checked all of those. And at this point, I'm going to move on to the temporal mandibular joint. I should have already inspected the temporal mandibular joint because that was part of my head and neck exam. If I had performed a head and neck exam, I would do so now and inspect the area around the temporal mandibular joint. Then I would palpate the temporal mandibular joint. And so you guys can see, I want you to open your jaw for me and close. And we do your jaw side to side. Good. And I want you to push your chin out towards me and back towards you. Good. And relax palpating the whole time. Next I'm going to palpate the shoulders. I'm going to start at the sternoclavicular joint. And again, I'm going to have to turn this way so it's a little bit better. Sternoclavicular joint. I'm going to palpate both sides, and you can do this symmetrically, to the acromioclavicular joint. Palpating the acromion and around the back along the spine of the scapula and onto the scapula. And you can palpate along the upper margin of the trapezius while you're here. Then I want to stop and do this on one side only. Do not try to do both sides simultaneously. I'm going to start at the chromium and I'm going to find the bicipital tendon and bicipital groove. If you find the acromion, go just inferior slightly and anterior slightly, you should place your thumb right into the bicipital groove. If you're not sure whether you're in it or not, just have them abduct their arm a little bit and you should be able to feel your finger right in that groove right there. If you're in there and you press firmly on that, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> and you'll